It began as a peaceful protest against the president of Syria. His response, brutal. Now, after two years of civil war, this nation with a population roughly the size of Texas has seen as many as 70,000 killed and over a million refugees displaced. As the violence threatens to boil over into a region already destabilized by the Arab Spring, international concern is rapidly growing. My co-anchor Terry Moran is on the ground in the ancient and now embattled city of Damascus tonight to bring us this look inside Syria. Bill, we have come to Damascus at just about the same time this civil war has arrived here, and you can feel it in the fabric of life, the fear and the anxiety for sure, but most especially several times an hour, day and night, the boom of the government's big artillery guns on the hills around town, firing into rebel positions in the suburbs just a mile or two away. And it is strange to think Every time you hear that sound, that it's raining death on people not very far away. And every once in a while, and more and more, death comes the other way. Wartime Damascus seems almost normal sometimes. Thank you. Shukran. You can still stroll through the ancient market, where a bewildering variety of goods are sold, and where the merchants still hawk their wares with disarming enthusiasm. Okay. <laughs> but the war is never very far away, as we saw today. So we've just gotten word that three mortar rounds have landed in the center of Damascus. Reports of casualties, we're on our way to check it out. This is something that happens every day in this city. We arrive and find a place where visiting sports teams stay. Blood on the walls, blood on the floors. A 19-year-old soccer player was killed. His teammate was in the room. He tells me his friend had just spoken to his wife on the phone when the shell landed, shattering windows, scattering shrapnel, slicing into the neck of his friend. We are all just athletes, he tells me. We've got nothing to do with this violence. Damascus is one of the oldest cities in the world, and it's seen countless wars in its 5,000-year history. Now, in the 21st century, the grim tide is here again. Today, in the suburb of Hamaria, at least 20 people were killed in an apparent airstrike by Syrian government forces, the latest horror in the civil war that is tearing this country apart. We drove here three days ago from Beirut, Lebanon, on a highway that has become a lifeline as rebel forces attack Damascus. It is a fight to the death. So we've been brought to the military hospital here in Damascus. We're gonna meet a high-ranking officer who was badly wounded in a battle just south of the city. His name is General Nidal Ibrahim, and both his legs are all shot up, but he is defiant. <laughs> He tells me he wants to get back to the fight, and I ask him about the allegations that his troops are massacring Syrian civilians. This is a false accusation, he says. Had it come down to me, I would have adopted a scorched earth policy with these armed men. This man lost his leg, but he too says he will fight again. It is a dirty war, and though it is far away, America can't ignore it. The map shows why. The chaos engulfing Syria threatens to spill over into Iraq on one side, Israel and Lebanon on the other, and NATO ally Turkey in the north, a nightmare scenario for the U.S. For Syrian civilians, the nightmare is here. Jihadist fighters funded by U.S. allies, Saudi Arabia and other Persian Gulf states, are swarming into this country, threatening to turn the conflict into a holy war. And Syria, an incredibly diverse nation of Muslims, Christians, Kurds, and many more, could totally disintegrate. We met the Grand Mufti of Syria today. He's a leader of the Sunni Muslims and a staunch ally of Bashar Assad. Like many Syrians, he blames his country's suffering on American support for the rebels. Be Americans, he tells me. Live up to your values. In some ways, the values of the people of Damascus aren't that different. They enjoy good food, as we did with new friends at lunch downtown. The commuters fight hellacious rush hour traffic to get home to their families. Look at this place. The merchants hustle to make a buck or a Syrian Thank pound. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, sir. And in the 1,200-year-old Umayyad Mosque, one of the grandest in the world, the people come to find the peace and truth of prayer.
they have so much to lose here. This is an existential fight for the people of Damascus, for the people of Syria, and most of them just want someone to step forward and make the peace. But after so much blood has been shed, so much hatred and sectarianism loosed on the land, the real fear people have is that their country will never be the same.